Someone also wanted me to talk about the Gulf of Mexico. It has come to my belief that the Gulf oil spill originally was fake. They did pump oil out in the ocean, yes. And I'm see if I can illustrate it here for you and make it plausible for you to believe what I say. Here's where the Deepwater Horizon was. We know that Deepwater Horizon or BP surface leased Macondo well 252 but the bottom leased 296 and right here the salt dome is. Over here in 295 we have Biloxi Dome sitting here. So they were up here in this vicinity and drilling into the salt dome and that picture I also can show you and that is exactly what they did. You have also seen this a lot of times and this is exactly what they did. They were actually placed here in 252 and then they drilled in this way and they drilled straight through a fault line, a New Madrid fault line and they have fractured the crustal layers all the way down so in this moment we have a washout of this salt dome and this salt dome I also showed you is connected to this called the Luan salt layer. This is a giant brine pool of salt deep down in Earth's crust which is connected right here to the salt dome in my condo well 296 and when seawater gets into this area here this is going to dissolve and this is going to contribute further to the collapse of the entire seabed in this area and that's right out to the Mississippi Delta. So that pretty much illustrates what I have been saying all along. This is going to go real bad and it's all planned. Because this is what they want. They want a divided America. And that's why they have placed the superhighway in this direction, on the west side of the New Madrid line. And I've just recently received some documents that it seems like that my map regarding the Navy map seems to be valid because there will be a new port in Kansas City and that fits with this map a harbor in Kansas City and if we go back to the other map again the NAFTA highway and look closely where is this highway crossing? Kansas City right there so here would be a new harbor where ships can come in here and port in Kansas City and that's not so far away from the main center is it? because this is Colorado, Denver. So that's a very short route in and that one is already designated. It's going to be the new Interstate 135 which actually says 9. 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 5 is 9. It's all about numbers, right? It's all about numbers. So that fit perfectly. And the reason why I say it is not oil down there. It is an asphalt volcano, Biloxi Dome over here deep water horizon were but the leaks the seven leaks of Biloxi Dome is an asphalt volcano so maybe this NOAA was picking up a 20 mile long plume here here I want to illustrate again what makes me suspicious of the oil spill you remember you saw to begin with from CNN that there was a pipe lying on the seafloor and it was pumping some black stuff and some white stuff and sometimes a little yellowish stuff out and this pipe, if you remember in the back of your mind, or you still sit with the footage, I don't unfortunately, you remember that this pipe was cut very precisely, almost too perfect, for being something which were bent, right, bent and crumbled over. It snapped in a perfect line. So what I suspect, because I know BP and Shell, they work together. They're part of this so-called Bilderberger group. So, isn't it possible now what they did was they severed this shell pipeline and yeah, let out a lot of crude oil for them to be able to use for exit. So what we were watching here and as an illustration of that there was an oil spill of proportions but we were shown something entirely different wasn't we? Oh yes we were. We were shown a gusher at least three feet wide and the, the uh, rover was just sitting there and monitoring it and it was the Scandi Neptune. I think that BP Oil Disaster have that recording in one of his uploads where Scandi Neptune is having what they were calling disbursement operation meaning pumping corrects it straight into it. But that doesn't necessarily have to be true that that was what they were doing. No, what they were doing that was they were simply sitting and monitoring the Biloxi Dome's eruption 
That was what they were doing. And they made us all believe that that was the oil gosh. And what was it that Simmons, he said, and what he was about to disclose before they killed him, he said the pressures from down there, from those depths, were at least 100,000 PSI. And there would be no man-made construction that would be able to contain or cap it. As I explained to you many times, and that's one of the reasons why you need to get away from this area, the oil coming up from down there where they actually hit an oil well is going up through the fault line and serving as a lubricant on the entire New Madrid system. And it might be the reasons why we have had these two leaks up in Michigan and Illinois where oil came out. That might be the result of all this oil with such high pressure of over 100,000 psi being shut through the fault line, through the crustal layers and all the way up through north. And now it serves like a lubricant, just like oil in an engine, so it doesn't burn. And this is also, when it goes through the crustal layers, this is up on the surface, seafloor. I can take it here, like this. As you see here, here's the surface of the sea, and here's the seafloor. So down here, in the first crustal layers, here we have the aquifers. And where's the oil going? They're going to your water table. Plus, all the oil is being shut up through the new Madrid line. And they save a new a ley line too, an energy grid line in the Gulf of Mexico. So I, I strongly believe that the Gulf oil spill was faked. But what they did was they ignited the Biloxi Dome and thereby created that what we are now facing, which is a NLE 2011 New Madrid fault line exercise. And they happen to have an exercise, anti-terror exercise, on the very same day that the so-called airplanes were hijacked and flew into the World Trade Center. On the very same day. Now they're having an exercise here in the United States, which is a national exercise, of a New Madrid fault line system collapse well, since the oil spill began, there have been over a thousand earthquakes in the Arkansas area. And that is significant. That's very significant. So this is as bad as it gets. Literally, as bad as it gets. Japan is falling apart. So is the United States. And it really fits with this picture. Also, we have to be very aware of Mount Rainer, Rainer, as some would call it. We also have to be very aware of St. Helens and especially Yellowstone. And after the Gulf oil spill down here began, all three of them have been awakened again. They are beginning to be active volcanoes. So the question is, when is that going to happen? I could imagine that will happen after the pressure release here and the entire continent of North America is going to sink into this hole and create this deep trench on the New Madrid fault line zone. When this one sinks in, pressure is being admitted to this area and that might trigger a volcanic eruption either from Mount Rainier or maybe from St. Helens but most likely Yellowstone Park because this one is really showing signs of activity and there's been a lot of earthquakes up there. And it started actually on this date on the 26th of um, August 2010 and this illustrates a 13 hour continuous non-stop earthquake at the caldera in Yellowstone Park. This is significant and this is something we need to really keep an eye on. Right now the headlines are Japan and I truly understand that but I don't have a timeline on it. I do not have a timeline on when the new Madrid line is going to go off. I have absolutely no clue but I could suspect it's going to be late April or in the middle of their exercise. The exercise is beginning the 28th of April and when it ends, I think it's three weeks later, we might have an America looking like that. And we also have earthquakes here. And we also have earthquakes here now. We also have earthquakes up here in America. This is new. The old New Madrid line is actually going as the map shown, but it's going south of Indiana, up through Ohio and in here where the inlet, the inlet between Canada and the United States. The Hudson Bay, I think it's called. Here's the old Madrid line, but the new one is going to go in this direction. There's been cracks in Kansas, there's been cracks found in uh, Illinois, and it, it seems very plausible that actually these two spills which has been up here 
because of the new Madrid system, there's fault lines in Michigan, which is up here. Cracks appeared in Michigan, as you saw a video of. Cracks is appearing in Illinois. So there's a reason to believe that the new Madrid lines fault system is going to take another turn this time. And we have Kansas City in this area, where we're going to have a new harbor, a port. So this is as terrible as it possibly gets. And here we can take it one more time in 40 seconds and you can see it's been very busy in Japan. It doesn't look promising. So right now Japan is doing what I'm showing you here, falling apart in the side like that and then the rest will simply just follow in. But that's going to be when Fujiyama going to erupt. I don't know the time frame for that, but as soon as Fujiyama erupted, I would advise people living on this island here, this piece of island, and get away into safety. And then we have these two explosions. And then we have this weather system just after it. But here you see the plume is not high, so there's very good reason to believe that this would be a very uh, restricted area. Not restricted, but in a limited uh, radius of the disaster. This is approximately 400 feet high. This one is even higher, but still not reaching the jet stream. And this is the MOX fuel reactor. This one is significantly higher, maybe 600 feet, 700 feet, but that doesn't get it up to 10,000 feet up to the jet stream, does it? No, it don't. So that was my reason for, for believing that it would not reach North America, this stuff. It would be in a specific location called Japan and in parts of the Pacific Ocean. But this vast storm, as we see it here, actually a little further in, here, this one was lingering for hours and hours and hours, and it dropped nine inches of rain. So, you won't pick anything up if there is any radioactive material in North America now because of Fukushima, because your Geiger counters won't pick it up. So you don't know. And you won't be told either. You can count on that. Because that will create total panic that you have radioactive fallout. But if you see sickness beginning to arise, then you're definitely sure that something is not right. And it will be the best thing for you yourself to leave the area. But wait for the symptoms. And another thing is, you need to keep a very close eye on the animals now. See how they're reacting. See if they're seeking away. Or they don't want to go out and stuff like that. Seem like they're scared. That is a strong indicator. Look for rainbows in the sky. And also, don't forget to keep looking up on your sky. Because we're also going to have a cosmic event of some sort. And it's going to be visible to the naked eye before it arrives. I don't know what it is coming. If it's this cloud, the interstellar cloud, or there is a rogue planet out there. I don't know. I truly want to see with my own naked eyes, visually, not through a camera, to rule out any kind of lens effect. But here on Earth, World War III is on the rise. And all these things, I think all these things, the Gulf oil spill, the Japan incident, and the strange weather phenomena, and all the earthquakes happening, they are all distractions, and all part of strategic plan to keep you distracted, but also to hurt their enemies, or potential enemies, or putting pressure on them, like they're putting pressure on Japan by creating such earthquakes. And question is, when you look at this, in Japan. How many times of these earthquakes has been involved with harp? I truly don't know. But this is a lot of earthquakes in 12 days. 731. That is a buckload. And they are all powerful. The Japanese people can feel these. They are up in the range of 5 and up. That is significant. The blue dot uh, illustrates how deep they are this is around 25 kilometers, all these blue ones. The red one is very shallow, about 2.4 kilometers down. And the one we had, the devastating one that destroyed Sendai, was down in the depths of 24 kilometers. And it also, as I showed you, it fits with the resonance table that they hit the right string in the crust in Japan with 2.5 hertz for a duration of 26 hours hammering on this very, very fragile area. And now we know the rest of the story.